God. Give us what God says the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, the mics here are on the chair. So we're going to pass the mics off. Guys, I do the mics by roll, so I'm not trying to leave nobody out. I'm just doing it by roll. So again, good morning and happy Sabbath. And we are going to open up this morning uh, with Lesson 9, and it's Living Wisely. Uh, the memory text reads, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand that the will of the Lord is what the will of the Lord is. And so we are in Ephesians. Let me get to Ephesians. Okay. And the commentary reads, not long ago, a crystal jug was placed on auction in the United Kingdom. The auctioners described it as a 19th century French claret jug, estimated its worth at U.S. $200. Two perceptive bidders recognized the jug as an extremely rare Islamic eel. Its true appraised value, uh, its uh, tr uh, true appraised worth is $5 million, about $6.5 million. What allowed that bidder to walk away with such a bargain? The bidder knew something that the auctioneer did not know, the true value of the jug. In Ephesians 5, 1 to 20, Paul contrasts what pagans and believers valued. Pagans valued a racy story, a drunken party, and debauched sex as the great treasures of life. Believers, though, know an ultimate day of appraisal is coming, when the true value of all things will become apparent. Instead of placing their bid on partying and drunkenness, they treasure, among other things, all that is good and right and true in Christ. Paul thus urges them to snap up the bargains found in Christ as they live, as we all do, on the threshold of eternity. And again, I, 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 I say with Ephesians, God is leading us right where we are. It's no accident and it's not happenstance that we're uh, in the book of Ephesians right now. Uh, we're on Sunday, and Sunday uh, says, instead, let there be thanksgiving. And in what sense does Paul intend believers to be imitators of God? And this is Ephesians 5, uh, 1 and 2. So Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Yeah, uh, young man, can y'all be my readers for the day? Are y'all here today? Or y'all y'all here today, right? Okay. So uh, Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Come on, have a too. does Paul intend believers to imitate, to be imitators of God? And uh, we are to follow God as dear children. Christ walked in love and sacrificed himself for us. As we follow Jesus' example, this is a sweet smell and aroma to God. And, and, and you know, you notice that, that, that as, as, as us being believers and us being Christians, uh, you know when you do something good for somebody, when you do a good deed to make you feel good inside, and so, with that being said, can you imagine 
how God feels about us. I mean, you multiply that to the 100th power. And when we love God first and then love others as ourselves, uh, how, 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 how glad God feels about uh, us when we, when we show love one toward another. And at the bottom it says, in what ways are Paul's words about sexual behavior applicable to your culture wherever you live? And I'm going to read this because um, uh, Paul was talking about uh, effeminate and homosexuality. Uh, and and, and we, we as a society, we measure sin. Uh, and, and, and all sin stinks in God's nostril. And so we, we, we want to make the sin of homosexuality uh, a 10 number 10. And then we want to uh, uh, make the sin of, of, of uh, just living together, shacking up, being girlfriend or boyfriend, not even a sin. And so that, 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 that goes against, uh, against God. But, 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 but we as the world, we just have some, some, some ways that we're taught, some ways that we're, we, we learn. And, 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 and those, those things go with us. They go with us all through our life. Uh, Paul urges the believers in Ephesus to walk in love. A call important to this section. This walking in love is to be modeled after Christ's own love for us, expressed in his atoning sacrifice. Paul affirms four things about that sacrifice. One, it is motivated by both the love of God the Father and of Christ himself. Two, it is substitutionary with Christ dying in our place. Uh, Christ is no passive victim but gave himself up for us. Three, under the uh, imagery of the Old Testament sanctuary service, uh, Christ's death is also a sacrifice which is made to God. And four, the sacrifice is, is accepted by God since it is a fragrant offering. And Ephesians 5, 3 to 5 then introduces a section expressing concern for sexual ethics. The young converts in Ephesus are in danger of reversing their Christian calling and being drawn back into sexual behavior that would, be, that would negate their Christian witness. On the one hand, the Greco-Roman Roman world of the first century exhibited the moral corruption and debauchery described elsewhere in the New Testament. For example, banquets of the wealthy regularly featured the behaviors uh, Paul decries in Ephesians 5, 3 to 14. Drunkenness, uh, rebel speech, risk entertainment, and immoral acts. In addition, urban centers provided uh, anonymity and permissiveness that fostered Im Im immoral sexual practices. On the other hand, many in that society lived virtuous lives and served as advocates for strict morality. When the New Testament provides vice or virtue, listen, uh, list in household codes. Its authors mirror things in the uh, wider Greco-Roman world. This world at once debauched and virtuous helps explain Paul's exhortations to avoid the immoral behavior practiced by the Gentiles while wishing for believers to be, to be circumspect in their behavior and so to learn good standing among outsiders. And so, uh, the, the question at the bottom says, in what ways are Paul's words about sexual behavior applicable to culture wherever you live? And, and you know, that took me back to biblical time. You know, back in biblical time, uh, they, were, they were talking about homosexuality, and that was a sin, and, 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 and men were, were getting with men, and women were getting with women. But we come today, we come to where we are today. And Paul's words on sexual behavior affirms that those who persist in sin will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so with that being said, um, it, just, it just makes you think how, 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 the world, how the world measures sin and there's no big sin or little sin. All sin stinks in God's nostrils, whereas the world measures sin. I thank God that he, uh, uh, that's okay. I thank God that he doesn't, that God doesn't measure sin. Uh, I don't condone homosexuality, nor do I condone uh, fornication. We've entered blurred lines when certain sexual immorality is accepted, even in the church. There is grace in Christ that offers sin, sinners hope, hope, hope to be delivered from the tyranny of sin and hope to live under the wholesome lordship of Christ. And you know, uh, I think that goes with the with the intent, the intent of the heart. You know, like like uh, two people committing a sin. And, and, and uh, uh, let's just say two people rob the bank. They, they rob U.S. Bank up the street. And, 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 and one robbed the bank because he was just, he was just bad and that was just, just in his nature. Uh, but, the, but the other one robbed the bank uh, because uh, he had a wife and five kids at home, hadn't worked in a year, and, and didn't know what to do. Uh, do you think that God is going to give them the same punishment? 
Did you say absolutely? No. God, and see, 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 that's why, that's why I'm glad that, 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 that God is my judge, because God looks on the heart. The man, a man looks at the outside appearance, and man looks at, 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 at what they think is going on. But God sums up the whole, the whole nature, the whole picture of that man. And I thank God for that, for that, for that grace and mercy that he gives us. Grace and mercy, yes. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, do not steal. Mm -hmm. So whatever your purpose, whatever your intentions, whatever your purpose, whatever your intentions, whatever it is uh, that led you to one man doing it because he's bad, mm -hmm. other man doing it to feed his family, mm -hmm. it's, still, it's still wrong and it's still a sin mm -hmm. uh, to steal because the Bible, one of the commandments said, do not steal. Mm -hmm. And so because of his situation, uh, he chose to steal. Mm -hmm. We get it twisted because for all have sinned, yes, mm -hmm. and fall short of the glory according to Romans mm -hmm. 3.23. But God provides for his people. Mm -hmm. There have been times I had no money. Mm -hmm. I had nothing. Everything that I had is gone. Mm -hmm. But God provided for me. I put my whole heart and my whole trust in him. Mm -hmm. And I believe, and he has shown me time after time after time after time, he provides for his people. Mm -hmm. So for me to go out and rob a bank because me and my son don't have nothing to eat, I, I can't, that's still a sin. I can't do that. And, and that's, still, that's still the world. That's still the world concept of sin. There is no big sin and little sin, okay? And so with there not being big sin and little sin, there's consequences for both of them. That's, that's, yeah. what, I, that's yeah. what I just yeah. said. Yeah, there's, said there's, 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 there's consequences for both of them, but we're not the judge of what those consequences are going to be. Only God is going to give them the punishment that they deserve. We can't give them that. We're not judging. The question was, do both of them punish the same? Both of them stole, so yes. No, that wasn't... Okay, go ahead. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I, that's what I believe to hear you say. I'm just saying, that's what I heard you say. Do both of them receive the same punishment? Yeah, yeah. Sin is sin. Yeah. No big, no little. Mm -hmm. Sin is sin. Let's do it. Yes, um, God has to punish sin across the board. Whether this man stole, you know, because he didn't have to feed his family and the other individual stole because he's evil or whatever, God is going to judge sin across the board because he is a just God. Right. He would not be a just God if he judged this one man's sin less than the other man's sin. The wages of sin is death, as yeah. she said. Mm -hmm. God is a just God. He's a righteous God, so he will just. Now, the difference comes in at is the law. Mm -hmm. Man has set a set, man has law. If you read the book of Romans, I believe God upholds the law of man. Mm -hmm. Okay? Man abuses the law, just mm -hmm. to put that out there. But God upholds the law. The law is fair, the law is just. Mm -hmm. But it's man. So man is going to dole out the penalty punishment for said sin. The law may go easier on the man who stole for his family. Mm -hmm rather than the man who's just stealing to be still. But God is fair, God is just. Mm -hmm. So sin to him is sin. No degrees, no level of sin. Yeah. And 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 and, and as I stated, all sin stinks in God's nostril. Mm -hmm. But that's not for us to divvy out what that man's punishment is going to be. It's only it's only God that's going to judge that man and give him his rightful punishment. That was the point I was trying to bring. That 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 that, that just like just like we have degrees that uh, that, that 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 man homosexual is the uh, worst uh, sin there is. But then committing fornication is okay because the world has accepted that. As you stated, God God is a just God, and God do uh, uh, He do judge sin all the way across the board. But God put in the whole picture. He don't put in what we put in. Go ahead, Richard. You know we do understand that God has punishment for sin, mm -hmm. and as we understand it, He lets us know that some will receive many stripes, mm -hmm. and some will receive fewer stripes, mm -hmm. okay? 
and, and what that is letting us know is that all our sin will be judged. Mm -hmm. Even the judge mm -hmm. that the sin that he has forgiven, mm -hmm. because they will be placed on Satan. Mm -hmm. And thus, God is revealing to us in his word that some will burn, mm -hmm. but some will burn longer. Mm -hmm. He does equate that sin. He punishes it at all, mm -hmm. but he does equate. Mm -hmm. You know, the level of the sin, the, the, the mindset, the whole issue, the whole person, the whole whole situation individualizes. It's not that 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 you get the same punishment that I get. That, that's like that's like uh, people getting theirs and you see people getting away with murder and he gets you immediately. He gets you immediately because he knows that you know better. Uh, and, 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 and his grace and his, his, his mercy is forever uh, working because he don't want nobody to be lost. Did anyone else have something to add to Sunday before we go to Monday? So Monday is walking as children of light. And so Paul writes, let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. So Paul has identified those who practice various sins without shame or repentance, the sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous. He has offered a blunt assessment. Those who are in Christ and destined to be participants in his future, his future kingdom, should not act like those who are not. And he now worries over the effect of empty words. That is, believers might be, be deceived by explicit language into thinking that sexual sin is not taboo, or might even be drawn into such sins themselves. To be so deceived, warns Paul, risks God's end time judgment, the wrath of God that comes upon the sons of disobedience. The phrase, the wrath of God, is a challenging one. That it is the wrath of anger of God suggests a contrast to the usual moody human uh, variety. Uh, it is the just response of a long-suffering and righteous God against stubborn commitment to evil, not a crazed, volcanic reaction to some minor infraction. Moreover, mentions uh, of divine wrath most often occur in the context of inspired biblical warnings about the coming judgment. And God warns of his own coming judgment, an act of grace since human beings are by nature children of wrath uh, subject to those judgments. And so... Uh, uh, this is, we're reading Ephesians 5, 7 to 10, and it reads, Why does Paul exhort believers not to become partakers or partners with sin? And that's Ephesians 7 to 10. Sean, it's your turn to read. Ephesians 5, 7 to 10. Ephesians 5, 7 to 10. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light. In the Lord walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all good goodness, good and righteous, in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto, unto the world. world. Thank you, thank you, Sean. And so uh, the question again reads. Uh, what does Paul exhort believers? Uh, why does Paul exhort believers not to become partners or partakers with sinners? Uh, anyone want to share what they what they got on that? Okay, Monday, right? Uh huh. Yeah, well, Monday. Sister Harris, let you not be partakers of it because you may fall into that temptation or whatever, uh, fall into whatever it is that uh, that sin. You know the word that the, the word says you can tell a person about their friends, and you know uh, certain people hang out with certain people and still do the same stuff, and they 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 say or they profess to be saved. Uh, the word also says, what do darkness have to do with light? And so if you're still going to the same places, doing the same things, still hanging out with the same people, uh, I think I think you need to evaluate that thing. Uh, but but partners work together. And some kind of connected relationship, and so that's 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 what that's what Paul was talking about. I mean, your partners your partners with that act, and so partners work together in some kind of connected relationship. And believers and unbelievers are not closely connected. And so, uh, if you're a believer and you have 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 good good fellowship with unbelievers, it's not saying to to uh, 
uh, not be around unbelievers. It's just saying that 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 you have to you have to watch your relationship and make sure that your relationship is acceptable and pleasing to God. And so the sinful actions of the unbeliever can be associated with the believer, causing damage to the reputation of the church. Uh, you know, uh, what's that phrase uh, uh, about a, a birds of a feather flock together? Not just birds of a flock, <laughs> uh, flock together. One, 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 one bad apple spoils the whole. Bunch. Yeah, yeah. And so, so, so with that, uh, we might think it's innocent, uh, but, 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 but being around them and 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 having fellowship with them. Uh, I mean, you're talking, you you're you're persuading each other, and I hope we're persuading them to be Christ-like versus them persuading us to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The part that got me was just said, don't even eat. Let's talk about I always, uh, you know, try to teach my son, um, you know, choose your friends wisely, those who you associate with, because you may not be like this person, but if this person is doing wrong according to the law, if they get into some trouble and you are with them, you are guilty by association according <laughs> that, to the law. That, that, that exact thought popped in my head when you said that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we, we have to be careful uh, who we even hang around mm -hmm. um, because I had some friends who were not saved mm -hmm. and because I was with them, mm -hmm. um, you know, people used to think that, you like that. that I was like that. Mm -hmm and totally far from it, but because I hung around this particular type of person, mm -hmm. the assumption was I was like that too. Mm -hmm. But once you get to know me, you know, you see there is a difference. And of course, you know, witnessing to my friends as well, even they're not saved, but if I'm there in that circle, mm -hmm. then of course I will let my light shine. And you know, the, the word says iron sharpens iron. And so friends uh, sharpen the continents uh, of, their, of their friend. And, 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 and even being around unbelievers, uh, a, a, there, there should be a difference between you and them. Uh, on the job, uh, 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 in friendships, just, just in, in public, there should be a difference between you, the believer, and, and the unbelievers. I mean, they may be together, may be drinking, and may be telling jokes and stuff that's not appropriate jokes. All of that kind of stuff, uh, you're you're exposing yourself to that. And so just 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 be mindful, and just 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 also uh, just always be the representation of God. Uh, where I am, my job, uh, uh, we got a new pay court, we got a new pay system, and and uh, the the uh, the HR person, she she put she she put. Put instructions on, on 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 what's coming down the different phases and this that, and the other. And our city manager, uh, he's he's been accused of of discriminating against four African American females. And she put she put she put her instructions on there. And he came he came behind her and said, first of all, and then he said, second of all, and and, and I. I I wrote him. I said that was that was unprofessional, and and and, and I asked him, uh, please going forward, and, and you know everything goes to the group, but but when you when you when you're talking to somebody and their behavior isn't 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 appropriate, you don't you don't just 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 show them up. I mean, you're supposed to be trying to reach them to help them have a change of heart because they could be doing it by accident, right? And so so I I, I told him going forward, um, uh, we 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 want to present the the. The, the, the image that, that we care, that we love each other. And what he actually did, he, he, he put one up on the, on the HR person and he gave himself credit for it. And he said that he was thinking about it when he first came back to the city of Berkeley. And, and, and all of that was unnecessary. And I just told him that that was unprofessional and you really need to be mindful. You need to get your feelings under control. Uh, you need to uh, uh, be professional and be ethical at all times. Sister Rita, if I may piggyback off of Sister Trice, mm -hmm. um, she spoke of, of instructing her son to be wise in mm -hmm. his association. Uh, we have to take that a level higher as well or as equal 
uh, Elder uh, Lashomo spoke on that this past Sabbath. We have to be careful what our children watch on TV. It can be just as influential, you know, as hanging out with someone. You know, media now, every time you turn on the TV, there's rarely a program that you don't see an inappropriate situation. And a lot of that inappropriateness is based on sexuality. It, it, it truly is. So we have to watch our children in regards to what they watch. And, you know, we got all kinds of social media. We got Facebook, we got Twitter, we got whatever, flashback, YouTube. Hey. You know, what a flashback? No, I'm just uh, kidding. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, okay. my point here is instructing them as well to, to not partake or not befriend people, you know, that are known to, to cause trouble or to stay in trouble, to stay away from that, you know, to walk wisely. But we also have to teach them as well to watch what they watch on TV. And not just our children, we're, we're, their, we're their first example. Of and course. so with us being their first example, you, you know uh, 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 something can come out of your child uh, that, that, that they did and, and you don't know where they came from. I, I, I remember, I remember um, when uh, I, I, I stayed across the street from a Christian friend and we both lost that job. I lost my job. I, 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 I lost my job because I filed discrimination suits against the VA and we were in litigation for 10 years. Uh, but, but my friend, uh, she, she said that God told her to quit her job. And, and uh, uh, a bill was due. A bill was due, and, and, and she told me, girl, uh, um, you ain't got to worry about that bill. All you got to do is go and put that bill in Anthony's name. And I'm like, girl, I'm not going to put no bill in Anthony's name. Uh, but, 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 the, but the Holy Spirit told me that, that when parents act like that because, because you're in situations and you're in circumstances and nobody know what they're going to do, uh, do until that situation arrives, right? And so you're in situations and you're in circumstances and you're on survival mode. And so you've been on survival mode. You think that you're just surviving and you're taking care of your, your family, but what you're doing is you're teaching your child some wrong habits. You're teaching your child some bad habits. And so, and, and not only that, but to, but to have the bills put in your child's name and the child grow up and the child's credit is jacked up and the child not even supposed to have credit, but the, the, child, the child's credit is jacked up. And I'm like, I don't know about you, but I know God. I know he got me. I know he's going to take care of me. And so, so with, 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 with having that faith and having that belief in a bill is due and you ain't got no money, and then uh, something comes in from M and U E that you don't have to pay nothing this month. Something comes in from, 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 from yeah, yeah it, it, it's, like, it's like that faith. I mean, when that faith kick in, God got you. And, and you just have to have that faith. Good. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, Elder Stewart made a valid point because <clears throat> by beholding, you become changed. And so even with the, the things that they watch, the things that they're uh, chatting into, mm -hmm. um, by beholding, you become changed. It, it is very important because I didn't know a lot of those things that the, uh, the preacher preached about last Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I didn't know and I was unaware, ignorant to, which I know they implement these things in commercials, movies, they gotta have that scene or that moment uh, that is not of God. Mm -hmm. And so I be fussing at my son and looking at what he watch and what he's doing, mm -hmm. I, it seems like I'm overbearing. Mm -hmm. And to him, I might be. But he needs to know I have his best intentions mm -hmm. in my mind for him. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I have to be, I be a, a little, um, what is that he called me over uh, a parent? Helicopter. Huh? Helicopter. I'm sorry, that's who I am. <laughs> and, and he's, 14 now, so he should know that by now. <laughs> Sorry if you don't, but that's who I am. I love those, my God's people, I love my people, mm -hmm. I love my family, and if there's something that I can say or do, I will, whether it hurts you or not, because the truth needs to be told mm -hmm. and not ignored. Yeah. We are the first teachers of our children. Mm -hmm. And my prayer too is, where I fall short, Holy Spirit, 
teach him all things that you have commanded. Mm -hmm. So I take responsibility in where I fall short with my son. But I thank God because God is in control. Mm -hmm. And I have to be obedient. So does he. Mm -hmm. He have to be obedient. So I just thank God for that. I thank God for, you know, learning of these things. That's why it's so important for us to come together. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will be like, oh, we got to go to church to love and serve God. But it's true. We need each other. We feed off each mm -hmm. other. I can learn something off of you. You can learn something off of me. Mm -hmm. That's growing God's kingdom. So I thank God for that. Amen. And, you know, with, 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 with where I was going with the, with the example for our children, uh, the, 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 Social media, uh, commercialism, and all of that is trying to desensitize us. It's it's trying to desensitize us to all of this 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 improper behavior. And so our eyes is 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 the gate to our soul. And so with our eyes being the gate to our soul, we not just our children because as I as I was going there, our children don't just just just, just listen to what what we say. They also emit, they they mimic what we do. And so, 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 with what we're doing before our children, like, 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 uh, uh, give an example. Uh, uh, the creditor might call, uh, and, and you know it's a creditor on the phone, and, and you tell the child to tell them you're not here. You just talk to your child and lie. So, 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 we need to, we need to, we need to be mindful and we need to be intentional how we live in. How we live them before people, how we live them before our children, because our children isn't just going by what we're saying; they're also going by what we're showing them. So we need to be mindful of that. Yeah, I know the Bible says shine away from all the all the things of evil, so that covers the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So we need to shine away from. Yeah, that was <laughs> and look, 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 look. And, uh, and I stood back there shaking and said, he really got something to say about that. Go ahead. <laughs> it's just, you, you made such a valid point there, you know, about asking your child to lie for you. Mm -hmm. um, but what I was really thinking about when you, when you was talking, and Sister Trace was talking, you know, our, our subject here, awake, old sleeper. Paul was telling us we got to wake up. We got to be watchful. We have to be diligent. You know, we have to wake up. If you're asleep, he says, awake, old sleeper. Yes. The time is now that we really have to have our eyes open as to what's going on around us in this world today in this 21st century. Amen. Amen. At the bottom of the page, it says, what are some of the empty words that in our day and age we need to be weary of? When, 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 for me, my catch words are total transparency. Total transparency. When you tell me that you have total transparency, why do you have to tell me that you have total transparency? If you tell me that you have total transparency, that tells me that you're doing covert stuff, that, 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 that you have to tell me that we are transparent. So, so when we know we're doing the devil's work, I follow Jesus or the Lord. When you continually have, have strife in your relationship, God is not an author. Of chaos and confusion. So, so, and he can't dwell in the unclean temple. So, 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 when we have these uh, these little debates, and we're talking about this, and we're talking about that, and and, and it's just 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 a matter of of of, of somebody wanting to be right. Uh, and 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 uh, to to your point, you was you was talking about um, we we have to tell the people the truth. Uh, it's not just telling the people the truth, but you have to have wisdom in the way you tell the people the truth. If somebody, if somebody came to me and they had a Bible and they kept beating me over the head uh, with that book, I wouldn't be saying that it's a Bible. I would see that I'm getting beaten over the head with that book. And so that's what we have to do. We have to be intentional. We have to be mindful. We have to pay attention to who we're talking to uh, because some people you can be direct and they, they receive it. Other people, you might have to do like Jesus. You might have to give them a story for, uh, for them to get it. So, 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 so you have to know your audience. You have to know your audience and have to be mindful. And, and, and um, uh, uh, Tina, I, uh, I got something to give you. But, but my bio, guys, my bio for the city of Berkeley, and I was giving it, I was giving it to Tina. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to read it. I'm, I'm going to read it out loud because this is my bio. This is my representation.
for the city of Berkeley when you bring up our website, uh, what I represent as, as the, as the uh, council person in large for the city of Berkeley. I said, uh, Rita Crawford Brown has been standing, uh, has been a standing resident in the city of Berkeley for 45 years. Ten of those years, she traveled with her husband, Anthony, overseas and later returned stateside. She is the proud mother of two sons, Anthony and D'Angelo, and grandmother of four children, Kelsey, Austin, Deasha, DeAsia, and Caleb. Rita began her career by working federal service. She served in occupations as secretary, training instructor, computer lab manager, and program specialist. She worked for the Veterans Affairs Medical Center from 1988 to 2000. She worked for the United States Postal Service at the main post office in the annex in Hazelwood. Rita fights for justice, equality, and fairness. She was called by God to get involved in the city of Berkeley. She had a voice but didn't like the way some things were. God challenged her to be the change. She served on the Berkeley Building Commission as secretary and later as chairperson. She served as councilwoman, wore two, and now graciously performs the role of councilwoman at large. Rita enjoys teaching, witnessing, praising, worshiping, and testifying to others about the goodness of the Lord. As a servant of God, we must talk the talk, but we, almost, uh, uh, but we also must walk the walk. We're being watched by the world to see if we are really God's representatives. Then you have that crisis of belief moment to know God for yourself. The worst disservice you can do is to not know that God, not man, is watching everything you do. Once you come to that fork in the road, you then begin to live more, uh, 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 to live more intentional. And so, so, so with that, with that, and with, with what I'm saying, the average person, the average worldly person, will see that. They will see my bio and say that that don't have nothing to do with your role with the city of Berkeley. But that is who I am in the city of Berkeley. And God said that if you deny me before people, that he would deny you. So, 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 so God is the leader of my life, and he always leads my life. So, so, uh, and, and then I said that Rita's view on life is simple, but very full. Her motto is leave, leave things better than you found them, meaning that no matter what your situation, relationship, place, or job you're a part of, you should always add value to it and leave it better than you found it. This will lead you to being more welcome everywhere you go. And Tina, this is about you. Rita served as Sabbath School Superintendent at Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. She served as church facilitator and activities coordinator with her partner, Teandra Lyles, at University Forest Park Nursing Home from 2008 to 2020. COVID brought about massive changes all over the world and due to health concerns was forced to end that endeavor. She presently teaches Sabbath School at Lighthouse Seventh-day Adventist Church where she is an AVID member. And so with that, with that being said, that's who I am. And so with, with, with being who I am, I know a lot of people have an issue with it, they will have problems with it, but we have to, we have to walk in, we have to walk in the role that God has us to serve in. And so uh, at the bottom, it says, what are some of the empty words that in our day and age we need to be weary of? And so do, do anybody help, help, help something that, that stood out for them that, uh, that uh, captured their eyes being mindful that they should be weary of? One word came to my mind was, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> that word has let me down so many times in this world. But, you know, people' intentions may be as such. Um, you know, we, that's why we don't put our whole faith and heart into man. Mm -hmm. Because man will let you down. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's just a part of life. And not just man, we let ourselves down. We, when I say man, I'm talking about all of us. Yeah, I ain't just talking about, I'm talking about all of us. <laughs> okay. All okay. of us. Okay. So, including me. Mm -hmm. But God never fails. God never lets us down. So, when people promise to do this X, Y, or Z, mm -hmm. and they don't come through, I have learned and had to teach myself that it's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't expect, we shouldn't expect, mm -hmm out of each other mm -hmm. that kind even though we said it with our mouths and our mouths should be our word mm -hmm. so that when that doesn't happen we don't hold grudges and say you said you promised me that's man's this word this the empty word that's man's empty word mm -hmm. but god's word is is true god's mm -hmm. word is faithful god's word we can trust because mm -hmm. god's word would never return void Amen. Anybody else have something that they wanted to share uh, at that point? Uh, uh, what are some of the empty words that in our day and age we need to be weary of? I, I can think of one. Um, 
and it may bring about some controversy, but um, I think people use the word love to such a degree where it has become meaningless. Uh, it has become empty. And the reason why I say that is because when you look at uh, love in the Bible, you, you're looking at God. You're looking at God, and God's love is unconditional. And also, when you look at God's word, God's love in the Bible, it's an action word. Mm -hmm. We can say it all day long, I love you, I love you, I love you. But unless there is an, uh, an attachment to that mm -hmm. by an action, it's empty. So I pay attention to the love word. When someone tells me, I love you, mm -hmm. if there's no action, then it's, it's, it's empty. You're right. Love is an action. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Uh, Sister Harris, you had something to say? No, I was just saying that love is action. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. So we go to Tuesday, and Tuesday is Awake, O Sleeper. And we're reading Ephesians 5, 11 to 14. Uh, Kendrick, I think it's your turn to read. Uh, guys, can one of you guys do my mic? <laughs> Oh, you're reading Ephesians 5, 11 to 14. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and Paul warns to wake up uh, out of fruitless deeds of darkness, and Christ will give you light. Remember, light dispels darkness. So where, wherever, wherever uh, uh, light finds darkness, the darkness has to go. Did someone else have something to add? And, and Brother Stewart, you, you had uh, added earlier, uh, wake up, wake up out of, yeah, wake up all sleeping, yeah. This, mm. So the tribe, did you have something to add? Um, you know, um, on my job, we have a saying, and that's what drew me to the job. Uh, through our exceptional healthcare services, we reveal the healing presence of God. Right. That statement, drew me to that place of employment. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was everything. So people relied on that. Mm -hmm. So if you're in this place and you're acting ugly, you're not reflecting what the mission statement was. Mm -hmm. So Come on now. Mm -hmm. Come on now, I like that. <laughs> so for me, Ooh. praise God, we had here in Lighthouse, mm -hmm. let your light so, so shine. Mm -hmm. You know it. That you may see our good works, but glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. We stand on that. We believe in that. So therefore, our behavior, because people are watching, mm -hmm. should reflect that. Mm -hmm. We are an example of God's people, and we should walk and talk mm -hmm. as such. Amen. 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 You can walk today. You don't have anything to say. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> to awaken from spiritual slumber and experience the transforming presence of Christ since Isaiah 6, 16, 1 through 3, which Paul seems to reflect is directed to God's people, Israel, we may view the hymn form of Ephesians, a powerful appeal to Christian believers to awaken to their role as missionaries, refractors of the light of Christ in a darkened world. So we are the light. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And we supposed to walk in the light, mm -hmm. as the light, mm -hmm. to the light, mm -hmm. be the light. Mm -hmm. At work, at home, at church, mm -hmm. <coughs> to people that we meet mm -hmm. on the street. And we said, like when I had a problem at work, I think it was Friday, the principal is very mm, disrespectful. And I asked her, are you threatening me? He said, well, I'm going to have to find somebody else. And I'm not threatening you, but this is just what the state requires or something. But and then she disrespected the custodian. I wanted to tell her, clean this place up. This place is dirty, and I wanted to tell her, you don't talk to people like that. But I had to find the time and the, pray about how, because I would be out of line to talk to a principal about how she talked to the custodian. So Especially out in public. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I really can't, I have to pray about how to tell her that it was kind of rude. But yeah, we're supposed to walk in life and treat people right. Mm -hmm. and, and you see, what the, and, 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 and uh, uh, I'm, I, I, I'm for injustice. I'm for the little man. I'm for the person that is in a position that they can't say nothing to their boss. I'm, I'm, I'm that person. I'm that person that that if you're wrong, you're wrong. But 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 you have to do it with tact. You just can't tell somebody off. You you gotta you gotta right. tell uh, uh, tell it a, a, the the appropriate time, and you have to tell it the appropriate way. You have to again remember who it is you're talking to and what type of relationship you have with that person. Yeah. Sister Rita. Mm -hmm. A small comment. Um, verse 11 really drew my attention uh, in Ephesians 5, verse 11. I want to read that from the Amplified Version. Okay. It says, do not participate in the worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness. When we look at the word darkness in the Bible, uh, most often it is speaking of sin. So it says, do not participate in work in unproductive deeds of sin, but in, instead expose them. And I, I, I really like this. It says, by exemplifying personal integrity, mm -hmm. moral courage, and godly character. This is how we expose it. This is how we expose it as Christians when we walk you know, uh, uh, with integrity, when we walk in moral courage and ethics, mm -hmm. and, and, and we display or exemplify godly character. But there's a flip side to that, okay? Mm -hmm. Paul is talking to the church in Ephesus. Mm -hmm. He is encouraging the people on how to live a holy and a righteous life. He's encouraging them how to live a godly life. The flip side to that is we have to expose sin in our lives too. How do we do that? We go before the throne of grace and we admit to God that we are indulging in. We admit to God. That's how we expose the sin in our life because we don't want God to expose that sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He will do it. Yes, he will. <laughs> So it's best for us to go to him first and expose and say, Lord, you, you know, I'm, you know I've, I've been lying for a while now. Can you help me? Can you deliver this for me? Versus having God put you in front of your boss or something like that and they catch you in a lie. Mm, right, right. Speak that thing. Speak that thing. <laughs> Yeah. Did you try? Lost for words. <laughs> yeah, the steward, you are, that is so on point. Mm -hmm. I got called to my uh, boss's office, and I thought I was in trouble. Then I got to think, what did I do? Mm -hmm. I don't remember doing anything. But anyway, I got called to the office, the boss's office, and he asked me, he said, Nicole, I need you to tell me something. Uh, I need to ask you something. I know you're an honest person, and I know that you will tell me the truth. Mm. That's big body right there. Hello. Yeah. And so he asked me, what time did my coworker come to work? Ooh. Yes, ooh is right. Yeah, like he, 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 he put me on the spot. Yeah. Mm. Like he got to pay attention to And that. I know what time my coworker <laughs> came to work. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, well, why would he come and ask me that? Mm -hmm. So when he asked me that, I knew that what I said will be the truth, mm -hmm. but it will also get somebody fired. Mm -hmm. So I was left with, I said, um, sir, I said, uh, you're asking me this. I said, he said, yes, and um, I just need you to tell me what time did they arrive. And it hurted me because I know that jobs are people's livelihoods. Mm -hmm. So here I am in this situation where he's asking me, you know, to tell him what time, and I know that I cannot lie. Mm -hmm. And so when I told him what time the coworker got here, got there, that cost that person their job. Mm -hmm. And I felt respons kind of responsible for that, um, but I knew that I could not lie. I had to tell the truth. Not that I was going to lie, but I, if he had never called on me, I would never have to say, what, you know, what time. So it kind of put me in a situation. But even in that situation, I felt sorry for my coworker, but I had to tell the truth. And going forward, going forward, uh, that was a labor violation when he asked you to do that. Uh, it is not your right. job to watch people uh, uh, watch their comments and their goings. Right. So going forward. Know what your rights are, and your rights would have been uh, a, 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 a supervisor, whatever your name is. Uh, a, 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 I don't have I don't have the the duties of of of, of, of watching my fellow workers' uh, comments and their goings. Uh, a, a, you're gonna have to take that up with with HR because that was an HR matter. That was not an employee matter. And I, I, I was like, I felt like. Yeah. He put me on the spot. Yeah, that's an HR matter. That, 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 and and that, was, that was a labor violation for him to even ask you that question. Uh, let's go to uh, the bottom. The bottom says, how do you live the kind of lifestyle that can expose works of darkness for what they are? And so we must walk under God's director. So follow the example and footprint of Jesus by simple virtue of, of reflecting the light of Christ. And, uh, and, and by reflecting the light of Christ, uh, it exposes the darkness around you by merely living in contrast to the darkness. We're on Wednesday, and guys, we got 10 minutes left. So Wednesday says, snapping up the bargains. And Wednesday, uh, Paul's exhortations to live in a way that reflects prayerful, discerning wisdom. What is the difference between walking not as fools but wise? Also, what does redeeming the time mean? And so we're Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Nicholas, it's your turn. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Ephesians 5, 15 and 17. Mm -hmm. 15 through 17. Or 15. To 17. Mm -hmm. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act toughless, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And so the question reads, Paul's exhortation to live in a way that reflects prayerful, discerning wisdom. What is the difference between walking not as fools but wise? Also, what does redeeming the time mean? And this is not a matter of intellectual ability, but a matter of one's positional standing in Christ, as well as knowledge of the Word of God. So wisdom is the practical application of God's Word to daily living. You're reading the word, studying the word, meditating on the word, and applying the word all day, as the kids say, every day, every day, as the young people would say. And so, so make good use of your time in the furthering of God's kingdom. Spend your time on edifying, building up, supporting healthy relationships. Remember, time is a gift from God, and none of us know how much we have. And after you lose that time, you can't get that time back. Did someone have something to add to that? That was so important, uh, uh, what you just said. And if you'll notice, Paul says redeeming the time. Mm -hmm. The key word there is re the time. Mm -hmm. He didn't say redeeming time. He mm -hmm. said the time. Mm -hmm. So he is telling us that we need to take advantage of the opportunity mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul is saying to us. Yeah. Take advantage of it. We have to make the most of time. 
And it's like you said, we can't we can't reach back mm -hmm. and bring time forward. Amen. So uh, now we come to Thursday. Oh, uh, go ahead, Sister. Tim. You might want to say something real quick on Tuesday. You might want to say something real quick on Tuesday. Uh, if, if it's going to be real quick. It will be. Okay. okay. My takeaway was, no, no one really likes to be in the dark. I know I don't. Mm -hmm. And when you are really in a dark place, you cannot see. Sometimes, unfortunately, we will be in a dark place and we don't even know we are in it. Mm -hmm. So it, it might be a a wise choice for us to start asking God, can you show me where my dark place is? Because when you're in the dark, you need a light. <coughs> and praise God, when we do know we're in the darkness, we can seek God and ask him to show us and wake us from the sleep, as the scripture says. But sometimes if you've been doing something for so long, you, you, no one has really said anything to it, you might feel funny about it, uncomfortable. You really don't realize it. So if we ask God to show us, expose us what our own dark areas are, then he can do what this scripture says. Await you who sleep, arise from the dead, and I will give you light. That is, that is just so rewarding to know. He will give us light in those dark areas. Because in the dark, you slumber. And we hurt ourselves. Okay, so uh, we're going to... We're going to Thursday, and so Thursday is Ephesians 5, 18 to 20, and Sean is your turn. Ephesians 5, 18 to 20. What does he depict them as doing in that worship? And, and Paul uh, depicts uh, uh, that uh, caught up in the spirit, experiencing God's smoke. Uh, this, 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 was, this, was, this was really something. Uh, uh, to, to be caught up in the spirit, uh, uh, experiencing God's uh, smoke-filled shekinah uh, shine glory, uh, this ushers in the Holy Spirit and allows you to bask in the glory of God through, through hymns and songs. The spirit is there. Uh, but your praise and worship unify in spirit and truth. And so uh, the heart is the innermost part of a, of a person. It's who, who we are in the dark when no one is wait, uh, watching. Uh, it beats with a pulse of the thoughts, feelings, and purpose that, that uh, course through the veins of our lives. And it's the background rhythm of our subconscious. And it is ever speaking to God since he's the one who knows it even better than we do. So here are, here are three steps uh, to make sure the song of our hearts is pleasing to God. And so number one, we must direct our thoughts, remember garbage in, garbage out, going forward to be intentional. Number two says manage your feelings. You are in control of you, remember that. You can't control what other people do, but you can control what you do. Number three, set your purpose. We must consciously and prayerfully orient our lives in the things of God in every situation. And then we come down to the bottom, and the bottom says, how can you use music to enhance your own worship experience? 
And it's up to us to make sure our hearts are singing God's praises instead of groaning our doubts, fears, and insecurity. So, 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 so when you come into church, you're not coming into church being spectators. You're not coming into church for somebody to entertain you. You're not coming into church uh, to, to, to get something out of the service. You should be bringing something in. So when you bring something in and, and, and God goes in overflow and we come in unity, uh, that, that the Holy Spirit just, 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 just moves it ushers in the spirit of God, and, and, and anyone that's not in that flow, they just miss it out, and they just don't get it. Uh, does someone uh, else have anything to add? We have two minutes left before I pray out. Anyone? Okay, okay so let me pray. Father God, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for, for meeting us here, Lord. Lord, you just you just shining the light on our mind, on our mental state, just 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 giving us what thus says you. And Father God, we, we we will forever give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it. And your Jesus, uh, in your son Jesus' name, we pray. Uh, thank God and amen and amen. Amen. That was awesome. That was awesome.